Right, so in this video, I'm going to answer um, ecology and genetics. So the first question is saying, figure 1.1 1 .1 shows a food web for a pond habitant. So the word or the term habitant means the place where living organisms live. So this food web is showing um, the interaction of animals, starting from the algae. So algae, they are plants. So under ecology or ecosystem, the producers, that is where now, all the living organisms depend on. So for this food web to exist, all these animals, they depend on algae. Without the algae, we can't see the tadpole, the otter beetle, the snails, the frog, fish, kingfisher, and so on. So from this food web, we can say that algae, they are producers because that is where now these other living organisms depend on. So we can say the algae are going to be producers. So apart from producers, what follows next are the primary consumers. So the primary consumers, they eat food from the producers. So we can identify the primary consumers here. We have the tadpole, we also have the otter beetle and the snail. These three, they are primary consumers. They eat the food from the source or from the producers. Followed by the next one, we have the fish and the frog. So the fish and the frog, these are called the secondary consumers. So which means secondary consumers, they depend on primary consumers for them to survive. Then primary consumers, they depend on producers for them to survive. Then lastly, we have the kingfisher. This kingfisher, it is called the tertiary consumer. So this tertiary consumer depend or depends on... Um, the secondary consumer for it to survive. Now, after knowing that, there are terms to use under um, ecosystem when you're describing um, the food that living organisms eat. We have the herbivores. So in terms of herbivores, these are living organisms that feed on plants only. So an example of an herbivore or examples of herbivores, we have the tadpole, we also have the otter beetle. Then lastly, we have the snail. These are examples of the herbivores because they depend on plants, which is um, the algae. Then we also have the carnivore. The carnivore, it is just a living organism that the living organism that feed on other animals. So examples or an example of a carnivore here, we have the fish. Because this fish is feeding on the tadpole, which is the animal. Then apart from the fish, we also have the frog. This frog is feeding on the snail, which is the animal, and also on the otter beetle, which is the animal. Then lastly, we also have the kingfisher is also called the carnivore because it, it is eating the frog, which is the, which is the animal and also the fish, which is also the animal. So the kingfisher, it is also a carnivore. Now, lastly, we have the omnivores or omnivores. The omnivores, they depend on both plants and animals for them to survive. Examples or an example, I can just say a human being. A human being eat or eats both plants and animals. Question, Roman men and born. Identify the producer shown in figure 1.1. So the producer here, it is just the algae. Roman number two. State the process used by producers to make glucose using energy from sunlight. So the algae, they are like plants. So they manufacture or they make glucose using energy from the sunlight by the process of photosynthesis. So the answer here, it is just going to be for Then Roman number three, 
identify one carnivore shown in figure 1.1. So the carnivore, they depend on other living organisms, like animals only. So to give an example of a carnivore, you can give um, as the kingfisher. So the kingfisher can be the answer. Or apart from the kingfisher, you can put the flock. Or apart from the flock, we can put the fish. So those are the answers. If you put tadipo, a tadipo is not a carnivore. It is just the herbivore because it is feeding on the algae for it to survive. Similarly, the other beetle, it is not a carnivore. It is the herbivore. It is depending on um, the algae for it to survive. So the answer you can just choose here. The kingfisher, frog, or fish. Roman numeral number four. Use the information in figure one point one to construct a food chain, including the frog. So here they are saying we need to include also the frog. So in talk of the food chain, this one it is just the linear series of interaction between living organisms. So to construct the food chain here, we need to include the flock by starting with the producers. So the first one we can start with the algae. Then apart from the algae, we need also to include the snail. Then the flock. Then lastly, we can put the kingfisher. Or we can use the other way around by starting with the algae followed by the otter beetle, frog and kingfisher. So that one is the food chain. Then B, it is saying decomposers are also found in pond habitants. Define a decomposer. So a decomposer, it is just a living organism that causes the decaying of dead living organisms. It is a living organism that causes decaying of dead living organisms. An example, you can talk of a lysopus, a bacteria. Those living organisms, they cause decaying to other living organisms. Then the last one we have, which is coming, we have the question which is coming from genetics. So it is saying a disease called thalassemia is caused by a person's genes. The hemoglobin gene has two alleles, capteta T and smota T. A person with the alleles, smota T and smota T, has thalassemia. But a person with alleles, capteta T and smota T, does not have. State which alley, capteta T or smota T, is dominant. Explain your answer. So, dominant alleles, they are usually represented by capital letters. And a dominant alley always is being showed up on the phenotype. So capitalita T is going to be the answer. It is a dominant allele because a person with capitalita T or with the alleles, capitalita T and smota T is not having thalassemia. So which means capitalita T is dominant over smolita T. So the answer it is T. An explanation. We can say the allele T is being shown up on the phenotype. So when you talk of the phenotype, it is just the outward appearance of a living organism or the external appearance of a living organism. Roman number, number two, it is saying, complete the genetic diagram to show how two parents who do not have thalassemia could have a child with thalassemia. So since here they are saying, the alleyu, capital T and small T, represents a person with fee, uh, a person who has who, who doesn't have thalassemia. So we are going to use capitulator T and smota T for both palates. So the first one we need to start with the, the, the phenotype, which is the outward appearance of a living organism. So the male is going to be close with the female. Then after that, what follows next is the genotype. So under genotype, we need to use now the alleles. So I'm going to use capitulator T and smota T. And also here, capitulator T and smota T. So what follows next, we are going to split the gametes. After splitting the gametes, what follows next is random assortment. So this one is going to be crossed with this one. And then we are going to have capitulator T and capitulator T. 
and also this one is going to be cross with this one so we have capital letter t and small t so always you need to start with a dominant alu or a dominant gene so capital letter t is dominant over small t then here we have capital letter t and small t then the last one we are going to have small t and small t so these are representing the first filler which is the f1 genotype then lastly we are going to have f1 phenotype which is the outward appearance of a living organism which is going to describe um, these offsprings that we have produced here so the first one is going to this one here is just going to be normal this one here also is going to be normal this one also is going to be normal but this one is going to have thalassemia so that is how we answer the question under genetics so thanks for watching